Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be solving a problem from the Cambridge entrance exam known as the step. And this is the integral we want to evaluate. The integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 divided by 1 plus sine theta all cubed d theta. Okay, if you want to have a go at trying to evaluate this integral, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to dive straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so there's probably a few different ways we can evaluate this integral, but the way I'm going to evaluate it is kind of following the same recipe that's described in the step problem itself. So part one to the problem is to prove this lemma here, which says that if we hit take a function f for which these two integrals exist, then the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x plus square root of 1 plus x squared dx is equal to a half times the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 plus 1 over t squared times f of t d t. So let's firstly prove this lemma and perhaps the first obvious step is well because f is such an arbitrary function and we're going from f here to an f here we need to do a substitution and that substitution is going to be t equals x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared and now you might think that the rest is just chugging through some algebra and to be honest it just is but there's a there's a sneaky little step we need to consider. Now, what are we doing? We're doing a definite integration by substitution. So there are three things we need to remember. Firstly, we need to remember to change the limits from x limits to t limits. We need to change the, the function itself, so the integrand from a function of x to a function of t. And then we also need to change the dx into something dt, so where everything is in terms of t. And that's actually the bit which is quite tricky, because if we just try and differentiate this thing here, which is what we normally would do, so we do dt equals 1 plus and then the derivative of this and then dx, um, it becomes very difficult to write dx solely in terms of t, which is what we need to do. So there's a trick to this, and the trick is to consider 1 over t. Now, what is 1 over t? Well, it's going to be 1 over this guy here. So 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared plus x. So now all I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by the square root of 1 over, uh, sorry, square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. So kind of the negative of the conjugate, like so. Now, what's quite nice is the denominator is just the difference of two squares. So I'm going to get the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x on the top and on the bottom I'm just going to get 1 plus x squared minus x squared. So those cancel and I'm just left with the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. And now why this is quite nice is because t and 1 over t are very similar. One is square root of 1 plus x squared plus x and the other has a minus x instead. Uh, and we can see that the square root is going to be the fiddly thing here. So let's try and eliminate it. So by doing t minus 1 over t and if we do that, the square roots cancel and ju we're just left with x minus minus x, which is 2x. And now this is really nice because we can say that x is just 1 over, t uh, uh, sorry, a half, t minus 1 over t. And so this allows us to work out what dx is solely in terms of t. dx is going to be a half, and this thing here is going to become 1 minus, and now 1 over t is the same as t inverse, so t to the minus 1, so if we differentiate that, the minuses will cancel and we'll just be left with 1 over t squared. And so you can perhaps see where this 1 plus 1 over t squared is, is coming from, and this half, and of course we have a dt. So finally, we can just say, if I call this integral here i, we can say that i is equal to the integral, well, let's change our limits first from x to t. So when x is 0, just looking at this thing here, we can see t is going to be 1, because 0 plus the square root of 1 plus 0 squared is 1. And it's also clear to see that when x goes to infinity, t is also going to approach infinity. And then we're literally just changing this f to f of t. And then our dx is just this thing here. So I'm going to bring the half out, and then I get the 1 plus 1 over t, squ t squared dt. And that proves the lemma. Now let's see if we can use this lemma to prove the result. Okay, so we've now proved the lemma. Let's return to our original integral, which is this guy here. And we have a stare at it. We know we will want to use this somehow. And we think, well, our integrand is something trigonometric. Well, we don't quite have our limits as zero infinity just yet. And then we have a think about other trigonometric functions and then we start to think of the Pythagorean identities and we recall that 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta and you know we've got a 1 plus something squared that looks a little bit like that we've got something squared maybe looks a bit like that and we know that tan and sec have these really nice properties especially when you're looking at derivatives that they're kind of uh, their derivatives relate to one another so let's see if we can write this thing here in terms of sec and tan and we can do it quite nicely 
So if I just write this as the integral from 0 to pi over 2, and then 1 plus sine theta, I can write as sec theta plus tan theta, all divided by sec theta. Let's just see why. Sec theta over sec theta is obviously going to give me the 1. Tan theta over sec theta. Tan, remember, is sine over cos, and sec theta is 1 over cos, so I'm essentially dividing by cos on the numerator and denominator, so I can multiply that out, and I'm just left with sine over 1, which is going to give me this. And so this thing here I can just simplify the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sec theta divided by sec theta plus tan theta all cubed d theta. Now, it kind of looks like I've just made everything a bit more messy, but as I say, we want to use this result up here. And so we have a stare at it, and perhaps we have a play with different functions to substitute. But we see that the correct thing to do is say let x equal tan theta. Why? Or why do I think that this will work? Is first it's going to change my limits to zero infinity, which is good. And then we can just check the integrand kind of matches up. So this is going to become, if I call this integral here i, the one we're trying to work out. So i is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. Because when, the, uh, when theta is 0, x is going to be tan of 0, 0. And when theta approaches pi over 2, x is going to tend to infinity. Because tan of uh, a number close to pi over 2 is close to infinity. Uh, so we get this thing here. And now, what is sec theta? Well, we'll deal with the numerator in a second. So I'll write it as sec cubed theta. But the denominator is sec theta plus tan theta cubed. Now, sec theta, if we look at this identity here, because theta is between pi over 2, it's fine to square root this and not worry about plusing and minusing. So this square root thing is just going to be sec theta. So sec theta is square root of 1 plus x squared. And then tan theta is just going to be the x. And then, of course, we're cubing it. And then, of course, whenever we do a, a substitution, we've got to check that dx, which is always sec squared d theta. And what's quite nice is we've got a sec cubed here. So we can write this as sec to the 1 theta times sec squared theta d theta. But the sec squared theta d theta is just going to become a dx. And this sec, sec theta here, we can just write as um, square root of 1 plus x squared. Like so. And so now our integral is purely in terms of x, which is quite nice. And it looks a little bit like this thing here. We've just got to determine what f would be in this case. But let me clean up the whiteboard first and we'll have a look at that. OK, so we want to mold this integral here to look like this thing here. So write it as a function of x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared. So the bottom is very clearly a function of x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared. The numerator isn't. If we had an x plus here, that would be great, but we don't. But we can think back to what we did earlier and see that the numerator is nothing but the integral from 0 to infinity. I'll keep the denominator the same, so square root of 1 plus x squared plus x all cubed. And this is just a half of, well, if I write this as square root of 1 plus x squared plus x minus square root of a 1 over it. So 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared plus x. So remember, we looked at this earlier and we showed that this thing here, uh, well, the x's would cancel in this case. And then we'd just be left with, oh, no, sorry, I have to add these up. That's my bad. Uh, so when we, when we work out what this fraction here is, it's simply the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. So if I add them up, the x's will cancel. And then I'll be left with two lots of square root of 1 plus x squared. So if I half it, I get back to this square root up here and then the dx. And now this very clearly is a function of the square root of 1 plus x squared plus x. So finally, I can just say f of x equals um, t plus 1 over t, or half of t plus 1 over t, divided by t cubed. And now this thing here is precisely f of square root of 1 plus x squared plus x. So I can say that this, by the lemma, is going to be a half times the integral from 1 to infinity of f of, of 1 plus 1 over t squared times f of t. And f of t is precisely this, a half t plus 1 over t divided by t cubed dt. And so if we just clean this up, let's take this half to the front so we get a quarter there. Uh, let me just rub this half out. And then if we get everything under one nice fraction, um, so we can bring this, write this as t squared plus 1 all over t squared bit messy there. And now bring this all together, this is going to be a quarter times the integral from 1 to infinity of 
t squared plus 1 times this thing here is going to be t squared plus 1 all squared divided by t to the power of 6. So the 3 there, a 2 there, and then I've taken a 1 from here as well, dt. And now this is just polynomial integration, which is nice or should be nice and straightforward. Let's just check it is and see what the value of this integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 over 1 plus sine theta all cubed d theta actually is. Okay, so let's work out this integral. This is going to be equal to, let's just expand the numerator, t to the 4 plus 2t squared plus 1 over t to the 6 dt. Uh, when I said polynomial integration, I didn't mean that. I mean, um, I meant, what's it called, like a Laurent polynomial when you have negative powers as well. Either way, it's t to the power of integers. Uh, so t to the 4 over t to the 6, t to the minus 2. 2t two squared uh, divided by t to the 6 is plus 2t to the minus 4. And 1 over t to the 6 is just t to the minus 6. So we can just integrate this using the very basic uh, exponent or the power rule thing. So add 1 to the power divided by the new power. So t, uh, t to the minus 2 is be going to become 1 over minus 1 t to the minus 1. This guy here is going to become uh, 2 over minus 3 t to the minus 3. And this guy here 1 over minus 5 t to the minus 5 between infinity and 1. All the infinite limits are going to spit out 0, which is nice. So we just need to care about the 1s, which also means we can kind of get rid of all the negative signs here. And so we got 1 over 1 times 1, which is nice. This is 1, so a quarter times 1 plus 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. So if I just bring this up here, if we put this all under one common denominator, a quarter, and then we've got 15 plus 10 plus 3 over 15. 15 plus 10 is 25, plus 3 is 28, divided by the 4 is 7, so 7 over 15. And that is our final answer. So, not not, not a, a fascinating number, it's not like 1 or 0 or half, it's 7 over 15, which seems perhaps a bit odd, but that is indeed the value of this integral. The integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 over 1 plus sine theta cubed d theta, with quite an interesting method to getting there. Do you know of any other methods to evaluating this integral? I'd be curious to hear, so let me know in the comments down below if you can think of any other smart ways of evaluating this integral. Anyway, this has been a relatively long video, so I thank you very much for watching. I guess if you are still watching, it hopefully means you are enjoyed. Uh, I checked the stats recently, there's about 80% of people watching videos who aren't subscribed, so it means loads to me if you could subscribe, and also if you have enjoyed this video, uh, please do give it a like as well. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.